This is the last section in the algebraic methods chapter, and this is about methods of proof. So this often involves um, statements where you might be talking about uh, odd numbers. So you maybe talk about 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1 to represent an odd number, 2n to represent uh, an even number. If you want to work out if something is a multiple of 7, for example, you would be trying to get like um, that, something like that, 7n, if it's a multiple of 7. Those uh, types of things, yeah. So it's, it's about proving those statements. And we have something called a counter example. Okay, a counter example is one example you choose to prove that something isn't true. Okay, so one example, you only need one example to prove a statement is not true. Okay, here's an example. Um, all uh, prime numbers are odd. Is that true? No, because I can prove a counted example. Two. Two is even and prime. Yeah, that's my counter example. I only need one example to show that the statement isn't true. Okay, prove that all square numbers are either a multiple of four or one more than a multiple of four. Okay, square numbers. Square numbers are either even numbers that have been squared or odd numbers that have been squared. So let's see what happens with each one. Let's take an even number and square it. So an even number squared is going to give you four n squared. We've got four times something Okay, these are multiples of four. Multiples of four. Okay, right, how about when you square an odd number? Well, an odd number could be 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1. Let's do 2n plus 1. Let's square that. So it's going to be 2n plus 1 times by 2n plus 1, which is going to give you 4n squared plus 2n plus 2n plus 1, so 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. Now that can be factorised to give you 4n squared plus n plus 1. Okay, this bit is a multiple of 4, and then you've got plus 1. So this is a, a multiple of 4 plus 1. OK, so we've proved that statement. We've proved that all square numbers and square numbers are either even numbers squared or odd numbers squared. Either, either multiples of four. OK, that's when you square an even number. Or one more than a multiple of four. That's what's, what happens when you square an odd, odd number. Prove that the following statement is not true. The sum of two consecutive prime numbers is always is always even. Now we can prove it's not true by the use of a counter example. Can we find one example where if we add together two prime numbers, it's not even, it's odd. The sum of two consecutive, so they need to be prime numbers next to each other. Let's write some prime numbers out and see if I can find two next to each other that add to give me um, an, an odd number. Okay, well, I can see right at the start here, two plus three, they're consecutive. Um, and that doesn't add up to an even number, it adds up to odd. So here's my counter example. Two plus three is five, which is, uh, not even. 
Yeah, so hence by my counter example, uh, you can have two consecutive um, prime numbers, which isn't even. Okay, so um, we've proved it's not true. Okay, part A, we want to prove that this statement is true. So I'm going to start with some algebra here. Now, each stage, if the statement I get to is true, it means that the ones before are true. So if this is true, this statement here, then the next statement um, where I'm going to multiply the first fraction by x and the second fraction, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by y. OK, then this statement is true. OK, so what else can I do that's true? Well, this must be true when I put the two fractions together like this. OK, then the next statement must be true. Well, I multiply both sides by x, y. I don't need to flip the sign because x and y are both positive. And this is true when I take away 2xy from both sides. And then this is true because this actually factorizes to give you x minus y all squared. OK, now if this statement is true down here, and it is true, yeah? Yeah, this statement that we've just written is always true. It is always true. Why? Because when you square a number, you're always going to get something which is greater than or equal to zero here. That's the important bit. When you square something, you end up with a result which is always greater than or equal to statement. So that statement is true, which means that the original statement is true. And part B, it says use a counterexample to prove that the statement isn't true when x and y are not both positive. So I'm going to choose, make it easy, I'm going to make x equal to a negative number, negative 1, and y equal to positive number 2, and I'll just put them in. I'll have negative 1 over 2 plus 2 over negative 1. So that is negative a half minus 2, and that is negative 5 over 2, and that statement is not um, greater than 2, is it? It's less than 2. Um, so I suppose I should write something like this. Now this statement is not true. It's not greater than 2, actually. It's less than negative 5 over 2 is less than 2. So there's my counterexample to prove this statement is not true. I right, should now be able to do exercise 70 on pages 152 to 153 of the textbook.